Father, we bless you. Please teach us your word again. And let your name be exalted in Jesus' name. And we are still on the series, Kingdom View of Relationship and Marriage. Um, when you act strange in marriage, your spouse starts seeing you differently. Probably as a strange man. Are you there? So, when you begin to act strange, you become a stranger in your home. Are you there? And when you begin to, when you start becoming a stranger, the danger is that you may soon lose your place and, and allow another person to take your space. Are you there? So, don't act strange. Acting strange will make you lose your place. Are you there? And when you leave your place, you are you have already created an empty space for another person to occupy. The easiest way to be happy in marriage is taking the role that belongs to you. Like I said in the last series, if you stay in your place, if you are a woman, stay in your place as a helpmate. Are you there? If you stay in your place as a marriage, uh, if you stay in your place as a married person, you will enjoy your marriage. As a man too, if you want to enjoy your marriage, stay in your place as the maid. Stop coming down to become a tail. Stay in your place as the head. If the man stays in his place as the head and the wife stays in her place as the helpmate, then the marriage will start. Understanding your role helps you to be effective. Until you know your role, you don't know what to do. Until you know your role, you don't know how to act. So if you know your role in marriage, of course, effectiveness uh, becomes the normal thing. When you make your spouse angry, you will end up becoming the victim of their anger. That's it. Some spouse, you, know, you won't believe, some, some partners are so unbelievable. They will deliberately make their spouse get angry. So you will hear things like, you will get angry today. I will make sure you get angry. Yes, you will get angry. Ah. Well, let him get angry. Let her get angry. You must, you must understand that if you choose to make your partner get angry, whether the wife or the husband, you will be the victim of their anger. So the moment you spark up the anger in them, you can find a, a nice bottle and heat it on your head. <laughs> Are you there? Some people will get angry and they destroy their television, destroy valuables. You will be the victim of the anger. So it's better not to provoke them. Don't provoke yourselves. If the husband provokes the wife, the husband will become the victim of the wife's anger. And if the wife provokes the husband, the wife will become the victim of the husband's anger. Are you with me? You must understand that. Now the next one is you shouldn't feel like loving before you love are you there you should not feel like loving before you love especially in the relationship and in a marriage you should not feel like loving before you love love is more than feeling love is a debt it doesn't run only on feeling it is a law love is a commandment so there's nothing like yeah, i don't feel like no no it's not feeling it's, it's not feeling. It's a law. You don't need to feel like obeying the commandment. Once it's a commandment, whether you feel like it or you don't, you have to. That's the kind of love that God, God expects us to have. Whether you are in a sad mood or not, you are not expected to transfer that aggression to your partner because love is a commandment. If you need time alone, just beg your partner, please, I need to. I need to. But something happened. While I was coming home today, I'm not really happy. Please, just give me some time. Let me cool down so I will tell you. And I don't want to, I don't want to shout. So that's that's okay. But that you now transfer the aggression on them. Oh my God. That is, it means you don't understand that love is a law. This dimension is very powerful. You need to know that love is a law, and a law does not respond to feeling. A law needs to be obeyed. Are you there? Uh -huh. You don't feel like when it comes to law, you just obey. 
you just obey. Are you with me? Now, um, another thing to note is this. It is in discipline that makes errors to reoccur in a marital relationship. Anytime errors reoccur, anytime you see errors reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring again, it means somebody is not disciplined. You did something wrong, you apologize, your partner forgave you. Now you after some time you did it again. You apologize. You are forgiven. You did it again. You apologize. You are forgiven. You did it again. You apologize. You are forgiven. You did it. It means you lack discipline. So it is in discipline that makes error to reoccur. Anytime you see errors reoccurring, it means somebody lacks discipline. If they love you, they won't leave you. Are you with me? If they love you, they won't leave you. It is love that makes cleaving to become to become possible. Without love, you cannot cleave. The man says the, the Bible says for this purpose the man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So you cannot cleave without love. It is love that empowers you to cleave. So if they truly love you, then they will not leave you. The one that loves you will not leave you. No matter the circumstance, if they truly love you, they will not leave you. You must understand this rule. It will help you a lot. Before you consider divorce, please put your children into consideration. Before you consider divorce, you need to consider your children. That is, if you have given birth. Wrong choices affect children in marriage. And I don't want to stay with my husband again. Fine. If you go apart, I, I hope you know that that's your decision to separate will affect your children. So there, there are, you know, you don't just divorce because of yourself. Otherwise, you'll be you, you'll be selfish. I can't stay any longer. I'm not comfortable. I everything is just I I I I I me 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 me. You are not thinking of your children. Let me let me tell you the truth. Ninety percent. Okay, let me reduce the percentage. I know that about fifty percent of divorce cases is resting on selfishness. When I ask, you hear things like, "I, I, I." You hear them like, "Me, me, 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 me." It's about them is about them is about them so they want to break up because of them 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 because of their own personal pleasure selfishness can lead is the major reason for which people go into divorce they don't think of their children they are just about me me i cannot longer i cannot longer be i cannot this thing happening to me I, me, me 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 and before they know it they'll break up and now their children will now suffer they believe well i have money i can take care of my children that's not it that's not it marriage is more than i have money i can take care of my children if money is enough then god will not talk about marriage because adam was not poor in the garden of Eden. he was a rich man so for god to still suggest marriage with all the wealth of adam it will mean that there is something that your coming together can give that money can never give you must you must work with this mentality so when you claim you will divorce because you have money to take care of your children it means you lack understanding is it about money if it's about money then there will be no need for the woman because Adam was not a poor man he was single in the garden and he was wealthy he has a lot of he has as a matter of fact do you know the wealth of Adam Adam controls the universe. He was in dominion of everything in the atmosphere, under the ground, in the air, in the sea. He had dominion. You know, you, if you convert that kind of wealth, I want to assure you, if you, con- if you convert Adam's wealth, there is no currency in the world that can value it. As a matter of fact, there is no diction, there is no word in the dictionary that can describe the wealth of Adam. So if marriage is about 
money money then if it is about money then adam does not need a wife god will have kept him to be single so for god to bring a wife to adam it means it is more than money so don't 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 let the fact that you are you are rich you can take care of your children lead you to divorce it's more than that it's more than that so before you consider divorce you need to consider your children Wrong choices affect children in marriage. Putting off your start, you know, okay, okay. Putting off your skirts at every little argument between you and an opposite sex is not humility. It is a lack of value. Putting off your skirts at every little arg- argument between you and an opposite sex is not humility. It is lack of value. You don't need to give up yourself cheaply just to settle an argument. Just because the, the boy is angry and you are in a relationship. You are not even married. You are, you are in a relationship. Just a relationship. Not even marriage. Just because the boy is angry. Now, the next thing is to put, put up your skirt. Who told you that it is the sex that will kill the anger? No wonder many ladies suffer heartbreaks and they will begin to cry. They will make people start feeling sorry for them. Not knowing they are the ones that have reduced their self to zero. How can you put off your skirt just to set you an argument? How does sex relate to argument? If they cannot value you for who you are, let them go. Until you let go, sometimes you will not receive the best of God. Any argument, any relationship that you will need sex to keep before marriage will keep you in bondage after marriage. Any relationship that you will need sex to keep before marriage will lead you, will, will, will bring you into bondage after marriage. You must have this understanding. So you don't have to put off your skirt at every argument. Uh, I don't want him to be angry. So be what? Let him go. Let him go. Your spouse is someone who has something you don't have. If you have all, then you don't need marriage. Are you there? But now the fact that we need marriage is pointing to the fact that we do not have all. We we are we need there's something we need. Are you there? That only our partner can can bring to us so if you have everything then you don't need marriage are you there so be, there is something you have that your partner do not have and there is something your partner do not have that you have and this is why god is bringing the two of you together in a union so that you can meet up with the lack on both sides Are you with me? Okay. Now, if we really want to get attracted to reasonable people in relationship, there is something about us that must change. Yes. Everybody wants to marry a reasonable man, a reasonable woman, but we don't want to change to become a reasonable person. Who you are is who you attract. If you are not reasonable, you will have a lot of unreasonable people around you. And if you continue to be unreasonable, you will have no choice than to marry a person that is unreasonable. Because that will be that will be all you can see around. And to get to a point that you just pick one of the unreasonable people around you. And two unreasonable people will marry and give birth to children that will become a threat to the peace of the society. So if you want to marry a reasonable person, be reasonable. You are not married you are not married yet he's asking you for money to sponsor his business there is a suspect if you are not married and he's asking you money he's asking money from you to sponsor his business that man is a suspect those people have just come to exploit what you have such people 
probably is enticed by your money so they came to exploit it after getting what they want they will leave you alone don't let love cloud your face don't let love cover your face open your eyes and be able to discern you are not married she's asking you for money to sponsor her business you are not married he's asking you for money to sponsor her his business what 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 does that supposed to mean you must understand that the state of relationship there's, there's different between relationship and you know there's different between the relationship experience the pre marriage experience and the marriage experience many ladies even before marriage they want the man to carry all their responsibility they want the man to be doing the same thing he will do for them after marriage it's not true you want to do this you call him you want to do that you call him and you are not married okay when you're not married what will you do you 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 will not even call him you will kill him <laughs> we have to work with the wisdom of god we have to work with the wisdom of god a marriage to a hot tempered man or woman is another marriage to the devil himself because every misunderstanding can lead to injuries those who cannot control their temper will end up regretting their actions so anytime you choose to marry a person that is hot tempered uh, you have just chosen to marry the devil because every misunderstanding will lead you to injuries are you there those who cannot control their temper will end up doing things they will regret so don't let your life be a victim of somebody that cannot control his, his temper so anybody that cannot control his temper let them work on it if they can't work on it that means they can't they can't join in with you on the path of marriage at least if you don't value your life it's important you know that your life is valuable to god if not for your own sake please for god's sake you have to cut off that relationship your home does not necessarily need a third party in the garden of eden the occupant was only adam and eve problem started when a third party visited that was the serpent so marriage is between two people it's important to know that you don't need to marry another people bringing another people into the affairs of your marriage bringing others to to contribute to to direct the affairs of your marriage can be dangerous to the marriage are you there it can be dangerous to the marriage so we need to be careful and um, at the same time we need to be watchful we need to be careful and be watchful Adam was enjoying his singleness until God looked at him and said, It is not good for a man to be alone. If your singleness is not pleasurable, your marriage is at risk. It was not like Adam was sitting in a place and he was thinking, hey, Oh God, God, well, oh God, well. that was not what Adam was doing. Adam was enjoying his singleness. You know, singing in the garden, dancing in the garden, just, you know going about you know you know just doing things being happy all around the bible did not say and adam began to be sober for his singleness no adam was enjoying himself he was happy he was smiling around until god now said it is not good for you to be alone are you there your marriage will be at risk if you don't enjoy your singleness because if you don't enjoy your singleness by the time you get married, you will bring that sadness to the marriage. And instead of your marriage enjoying gladness, it will be springing forth sadness because you never for once enjoyed your singleness. Oh my God. I just hope our generation can listen to this marriage series. Can, you know, if you are listening to this series now and you have not listened to part one, go and get Part 1, 2, 3, and listen to it from the beginning to the end. It will do you a lot of good. Let me come again with this powerful point. Adam was enjoying his singleness until God looked at him and said, It is not good for a man to be alone. 
if your singleness is not pleasurable, your marriage is at risk. You must understand that. Now, the church is the wife and Christ is the husband. If you understand the relationship between the church and Christ, your marriage is safe. I, have, I, I said something like that in the previous series. If you understand the relationship between God, between Christ and the church, then your marriage will be safe. Because the Christ is the head, the church is the bride. Are you there? So if you, you as a man, you are going to be the head of a home. So go and learn how Christ deals with the church. You as a wife, you are going to submit to a man. So go and learn how the church should deal with Christ. If both of you knows these two powerful relationships, then your marriage will be saved. The model for marriage as given by God is the relationship between Christ and the church. The model for marriage as given by God is the relationship between Christ and the church. Are you with me? Okay. Um, to compare to compare your God with another with another one is idolatry. Are you there? To compare your God with another one is called idolatry. So also to compare your spouse with other people is the beginning of adultery or the beginning of idolatry. So don't compare your spouse with others. Look at what look at what he is buying for his own fear. Look at what he's buying for his own or for, for his own wife. Look at what you are buying for him. Can't you copy him? Can't you copy him? The most band so will say, look at what she's doing. Look at what she's doing. You are just here doing nothing. Can't you copy her? Can't you copy her? Don't compare your partner with another person. Are you there? That can be the beginning of you know hatred in the family. Are you with me? So, whatever thing you want your partner to do, tell them. Let them know why they need to do it. Are you there? And encourage them to do it. That's all. The Bible says, comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. So, don't compare yourself with yourself. Don't compare your partner with another person. If you want them to, 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 to want to see some certain things in them, tell them and encourage them to take to make a move in that direction. Now, as a woman, if the man does not have what it takes, as a woman, if the wife, if the man does not have what it takes, you know, to help you submit to him, then don't marry him. Because if you marry such a person, it will be hard for you to submit. One of the things the woman must look at in the man is this man. It's not just about the fact that he loves me. Is this somebody I can submit to? Is there somebody that it will be easy for me to submit to? Because when you get married, submission is a must. It's a commandment. So you first check the, the man. Is this somebody I can submit to? If yes, then coupled with it. What the Lord has told you, you can go for the person. But if he is not the one you can submit to, don't marry him. Because if you marry him, you find it hard to submit to him. Meanwhile, the will of God, one of the ways to identify the will of God is the man will always be the person you can submit to. Are you with me? Okay. Um, until a man is ready to die, for his wife, he doesn't love her. Just as Christ laid down his life, husbands should be willing to sacrifice themselves for their family. The true test of love is in the ability to give yourself. <laughs> when we say the husband is the head of, of the home, some men think it's, it's, it's just about giving instructions, telling your wife to do this, to do that, having sex, uh, becoming a boss, eating big food, taking plenty of meat and fish. No, 
being the head of the home means that you must be ready to sacrifice yourself for the home. Take for instance, somebody comes to your family and says, Yes, yes, we want to kill, we have to kill one person here. Your children are there, your wife is there. And they say they want to kill one person. Being the head of the home, you should be able to... <laughs> you should be able to submit yourself and say, if it is one person you want to kill, then take me and leave this people. That is the, that is head. Head is not just the one that is sitting on the throne becoming fat and uh, fatter and fatter, losing strength. No, the head is always ready to sacrifice himself. How God proved, how Jesus proved himself. One of the greatest proof that Jesus Christ is the head of the church was at the cross when he laid down his life for the church. So the task of being a husband is not just about the honor you get. It's about your ability to lay down your life for, for your family. You need to understand this so that you will know that being a man uh, is a serious responsibility. For the fact that you are a man, there is a responsibility on you. You need to understand that. As Christ will always forgive the church or, you know, for their instabilities and mistakes, you know, you also must be ready to forgive your spouse in marriage because uh, they may not stop making mistakes. So, as long as Christ has not stopped forgiving the church, you also must not stop forgiving your partner because our model for marriage is Christ and the church. Are you with me? Now, Christ is glorified when the church is spiritually sound. Therefore, we must know that our spouse joy is our own joy and their success is our own success. Are you there? So, don't leave your partner to suffer alone. Don't, don't, don't expose them to shame. You must understand that their success is your success and their joy is your joy. Christ carried his cross without complaining. The spouse should also take up their responsibilities without, mem without murmuring. You may be helped along the way, but make sure you know that it is your right to be responsible. Are you there? Christ carried his cross without complaining. The spouse should also take up their responsibilities without murmuring. You may be helped along the way, but make sure you know that it is right to be responsible. As Christ gave himself for all, you must also be willing to give yourself you know, into the relationship. You must be ready to give your time to it. The greatest gift a man can give is the gift of himself. So Christ gave so much to the church until he got to a point that to crown the effort, he gave himself. Are you there? So if you are married, you must be willing to give all you can give to see that your marriage is, in, is, is healthy, including giving yourself. Are you there? Whatever you give to your wife will be given back to you in good measure, pressed down and shaking together. <laughs> Are you there? If you give her honor, you get honor. If you give her peace, you get peace. If you give her trouble, you get double trouble. Are you there? If you give her gifts, you get double gifts. If you surprise her, ah, she will surprise you a lot. If you appreciate what the little things she is doing, oh my God, you will, she will appreciate everything you are doing. Are you there? So sometimes you just need to come in and appreciate certain things, little things that your your, your partner is doing. You can just look at your husband and say, wow, you have been a good man. You have been trying. Ah, all this why these things you are doing, not so many men can do it. I really appreciate you. I love you. So, those kind of things will make him, he may not smile, but in his mind, he is laughing. He is happy in his mind. You know, men can be, we, we know how to act. So he can be acting. But when he goes to his room alone, he will just tell himself, wow, thank God I married the right person. I guess he will be joyful. 
So the same, the same way the husband also can, you know, can praise the wife. Oh my darling, you are doing well. You are so good in cooking. <laughs> the way you cook these days, God, I don't understand. Hey, did you learn this? You are cooking from heaven. You see her dress and you both were said, Jesus. I never knew it was an angel I married. This woman, you are just changing dimension every day. Thank God I married you. you know, those kind of things will strengthen their marriage bond. That is what that is why a stranger will come to your wife and say, Please, I love you. And, and your wife will say no. She will say no with John because she knows that she she's getting joy from, from her marriage. That's why a female will come to your husband and your husband will say no because he knows you are there's joy in the home. Are you there? Don't make it hard for, for them to love you. And don't make it hard for them to, to respect you. Are you with me? This is the wisdom of God. Don't sell it. Don't sell it. <laughs>